In this SQL Fundamentals video, we will start working with more than one table in a query. So you'll need, if you want to work along with the video, you'll need your Oracle account, access to uh, the student team's database. We won't actually work with HR schema this particular time. Usually, you're going to want to pull data from more than one table when you write an SQL statement. Let's say, for example, you want to get a list of sales orders for today, and in that list you want to include customer information and product information. That means that you will need to work with four tables. We're looking primarily at order data, but we want to pull in associated customer data and product data that was sold. So tables are joined or connected based on a column they have in common. This is your primary key to foreign key relationship in most cases. So here we have customer table joined to order table through customer ID. Customer ID is the primary key here. It is the foreign key in the order table. The order table is joined to order item through order number. It's the primary key in order, order number, and it's the foreign key in order item. Order item is joined to product through product ID. As we see, product ID is the primary key. It's the foreign key in order item. So we'll first look at an example using two tables. We're going to show team names and student information for those students on each team. So we have a select clause where we have select team underscore name, team ID, student first name, student last name. From in the from clause will list two tables, separating them with commas. In the where clause we will define exactly how those two tables join, based on, in this case, on the primary key and the foreign key. And then I have an order by to sort the output. Now I'm showing teams dot team ID here, which isn't actually necessary because the primary key is team ID and the foreign key is student std underscore then team ID. If the names in both tables are identical you will have to specify which table you want the select clause to use. This is called a fully qualified column name when you must specify the table name followed by a period and then the column name. So if we were to run this query, we would get this output. In fact, I'll switch over to SQL Plus and we'll try that. Connecting to Teams, I'm pasting in the SQL, not typing it in, and I'll run that query. And we see the results. There are actually two ways to join tables. You can join them by specifying the common column between two tables in the WHERE clause, or you can use the JOIN operator in the FROM clause. So we've already seen the example of the WHERE clause, where table name dot primary key equals table name dot foreign key. Table name is not required if the primary key name does not match, is not identical with the foreign key column name and they don't have to be identical. The join operator occurs in the from clause. So we have our select team underscore name, team ID. But when we get to the from clause, we say from teams, enter join, actually the word enter is optional, teams, enter join students, and then we use on and specify how those two come together. Team ID equals student underscore team ID. Once again, if the name of the columns are identical, you will have to precede the column name with the actual table name. But here I see or show an example of running this code here uh, with the from clause and the join operator and we get the same results as we would with the where clause. Which to use, where clause or join operator? It's really up to you to decide. There are a few situations where the method of joining tables isn't a matter of choice, and you'll see an example of this at least once in the advanced SQL series. But you should be familiar with both the WHERE clause method and the JOIN operator. The WHERE clause you will see especially in older SQL code, 
because the join operator was not fully supported by most of the major software database software companies until about 10, 12 years ago. So let's look at using more than two tables in a query. Let's show information about students and their evaluations as an evaluatee. We'll use the inner join. We have the select clause showing the columns we want to see. In the from clause, we will first join teams to students. The on clause indicates the two columns that join those two tables. And that's followed by the third table, join evaluations, on and the two columns that join the results of the first join with the third table. And this would be the result that we get. I'll switch over to SQL Developer. And what we get here are the results of the query, showing the team name, team ID, uh, student ID, first name, last name, and evaluation information. So each join creates a temporary data set, and this data set is what is joined with the next join operator when you have more than one join. So we're looking at the same thing just a little more closely. Teams join students, the two common columns in those two tables. And then we have this result of data from teams and students. Then we will join this to evaluations. We can repeat the same query, but doing it with the WHERE clause, and we will get the same results. But instead of using JOIN, we do FROM, just list the tables separated by commas, WHERE, joining team to students, and then joining students to evaluations. The order of in which you join these in terms of, I could list students joined to evaluations before I list teams joined to students. That would not make a difference in the outcome. So what we've looked at here is how we can use more than one table in a query, the two ways to join tables, the WHERE clause, and the join operator.